Okay, hello everybody. Let's fix that camera a little bit there. So we are here with Bailey. This is part of our externship yeah. program with the BAC. And we're going to be uh, showing her how to do the first thing we do before we go measure a project. So as you know, we have a four step process. Um, step one, existing. Step two, define. Step three, design, and step four, document. So before we do step one, we do some prep work. The prep work is really um, generating a base so that when we go to measure, we don't necessarily waste a whole lot of time measuring on site, sketching and measuring on site. We're still gonna have to sketch. That's, there's no question about it. But at least we wanna have a nice base. And I'll tell you the, the reasons, there are many. One, sometimes we have to go measure sites when it's 10 degrees outside. We don't want to spend too much time outside, right? So we rather do a quick massing, get some general information right so that we reduce site work time. Um, and this, it's more comfortable and warm in here to do it, right? Two, we want to get an understanding of the building we're going to measure before we go. In general, it's just like feeling it out, getting a sense for what it's, what am I up against, right? Like what, what are the challenges? What are we going to have to deal with? And that helps a ton. Um, and, and, and three is efficiency. In general, it's just efficiency. So we go and we have our tape measure ready. We have a base drawing ready, printed. Mm -hmm. We have a clipboard ready, which is part of the prep work we're going to show you later. Um, and all of that's ready for the day of measuring so that when we come here, everything's already printed. Has it happened to you that the day you have a deadline, the printer is broken, nothing works? Mm -hmm. So we like to have that ready before we go, mm -hmm. early before we go. So that said, I'm sharing here my screen and we're going to go through the process of creating that first massing, the first massing. A lot of really good and important decisions have to be made. This is really critical, regardless of whether you're going to be working on this project or somebody else going to be working on this project. Whoever works on it will inherit your mistakes mm -hmm. if you have any, but will also inherit your benefits if you have, if you've done something correct, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very helpful. So in that, se in that sense, the first thing that I like people to be able to do is to set up the massing the proper way with the Revit template. We go to new, right? Mm -hmm. And here's this construction template, project template. We are going to go through uh, as a project, but we're going to browse our template, okay? So we go through the browse uh, part. And one thing I do a lot, and I want people to do a lot is, uh, in general, I try to be very, very efficient, very efficient. What's efficiency is what's the quickest way to get from point A to point B. That's really all, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, how am I going to browse through search and projects? I'm, I've been very crazy about shortcuts. I'm crazy about finding path. So I don't want you to go one by one and try. No, 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 no. You can find the project, which everybody has access to. And here's our template for the project. Um, all of our folders have it. I always delete this backup because it creates many backups. But you simply copy this path, which you already have, and you paste it right here and click enter, and it will bring you right into your template. So you don't have to go desktop, project, file. I actually determine how seasoned somebody is, how smart somebody is. And sorry, it sounds like a little aloof or condescending, but really how I don't know, like, like efficient in general, that person is by how many shortcuts they use to achieve the same result that somebody else will take twice the amount of time. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and that works across the board because we value time, time is money. Mm -hmm. So that person therefore probably will make more money than a person that takes twice the same amount of time to do the same thing. Right. So, and it doesn't matter. Like it could be a person that just started working for the very first time. And I see these little shortcuts and I see that they're able to do those things. And I immediately will appraise them differently. I'm like, well, why? Cause they deliver. It's all about results. Right. So, so that's that we go here, we do open and then it prompts you to be on this thing right here. We do. Okay. And now it opens the template as a project. It will not override it before before we have the option of pro template mm -hmm. or project. Now it's a project. So now it's setting it up, setting it up as a project, not as a template. They're different things, right? Mm -hmm. 
So um, there, there are limitations. Um, I've had people work on a template as a template and do a whole project in it, and they haven't noticed the limitations that that has, but it does have limitations. Mm -hmm. It's just that they haven't gotten that advanced to even be able to notice that, right? Yeah. So like if you're doing a deck, I would never recommend it. Actually, I would never recommend it. If you're doing something very simple and it happens, it's no big deal. I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, whatever. So I'm not going to be too mad about it. But I do want people to know how to open the template as a project. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the first thing. This is the first thing you see. And you're like, what is this? Right. Don't get overwhelmed. This is like, I like to say that this template is almost like when you have any app. Like when you open the app, they're always trying to show you your starters kit. Like, mm -hmm. here's what you've got to work with, mm -hmm. right? Here's a sample. Mm -hmm. So this is your starters kit right here. So this has different types of tubs, right? Different types of stairs, different types of outdoor furniture. Your starters kit, right? Um, I recommend people to delete it. It's just, we, we always just show this and this is the first window that opens because we want people to know what they have available to them as a resource. And um, we try to upgrade it, update it, and be able to do more things. And it's like, well, now we got you know, a car. We got a truck. We got something, right? So things like that, we want to make sure that we show it, all right? So that's the case there. So I typically just delete it. You know, okay, I'm aware. Looks great. Thank you. <laughs> right? We delete it. I, de I really delete all of those things um, that I don't know if I'm going to use or not. But... Mm -hmm. Generally, I like to just maintain what I know I'm going to need. And this brings another point. Before you did this with me, mm -hmm. I had you read the proposal, mm -hmm. right? The proposal is the contract that binds us legally with this client to deliver something. Mm -hmm. And I always, I always explain more than what I need to because um, I'm a teacher by default, so I like teaching. So, but also because I don't want to leave any gaps. So everything is tied together from the moment I meet a person, hi, how you doing, right? To when I deliver their, their product, their mm -hmm. service, right? I tie it all together. So when you're opening this template, and this goes into what I said of what whoever works in this will inherit that. Mm -hmm. So you already read the contract. So you know we're supposed to deliver X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Well, if this starters kit happens to have a garage and we're not doing a garage we will delete that they're like no i don't need that so um if this starters kit happens to have an attic you don't need it you're not gonna do that right so you will appropriate i guess the model to what it is that you're going to be working with uh, on that sense um you start dealing that so also another thing that you get got to see was that i record all of my initial consultation so that's step zero so we're right in the middle between step zero, which is initial consultation. Hi, how you doing? Let's take a look at your project. Um, I write a contract. We get assigned. We get a deposit. That's a prerequisite to do this. Mm -hmm. Nobody does this unless a signed contract has been provided and a deposit has been provided. So you're clear to go. It's all clear. And when, when do you do the zoning? Great. So the zoning analysis comes after. Okay. Right? Right after. Right, so we could, we do the mazing, and that could actually be done in tandem, parallel to this. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. So, this is all part of the define uh, well existing conditions. But I, I guess it's the, uh, define. Yeah, I don't even know my own four steps. Yeah. So, um, define and vision. Right, so it's defined. So you're defining the boundaries, the constraints, the opportunity. You're defining all of that as it is. Mm -hmm. And a reality of a property is that it. It was born in a district. It was born in a zoning, right? Just like you were born in a state that has laws and regulations. So you got, you know, so so we'll get to that table of the definition of that um, later on. But now all I need is a clean and accurate, you know, accurate in the way that it looks and the way that it is generally massing so that we can then make it real accurate by measuring it all and drafting it all as it is right so i recommend people to delete all the extras again get rid of all the extras um and you know get it as clean as possible this is a a a very good actually box in the sense that 
walls are where they're supposed to go in relationship to foundations, in relationships to footings, in relate like the, you know, floors are in the, in the way that they're supposed to go. So if you manipulate this model, things do have a relationship with it, you know, like how they align. And later on that gets fine tuned, but it's like, if, if you wanna cut a section through this, this didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It's not like just a, they're not randomly sitting, right? Mm -hmm. So they make sense. Generally they try to make sense. So, that's the first thing I do. Like, okay, I clean that up, great. Then I'm gonna bring a good friend of mine. It's the project browser. The project browser has already been established to have existing, existing first floor, existing second floor, demolition, and propose. Which are the things that we care about. We wanna know what's existing, what's gonna be demoed, and what's gonna be at. So if you are to be updating this right now you are going to update it under the existing that's a face i don't know how much you know about faces but then i'm gonna bring our good friend the properties bar properties bar tells us what's happening now literally is just finding whatever you have like oh this is a 3d view that's what's happening now i select a, a wall oh that's a wall what's happening now Right. Okay. So you just call it, it's my status, no, like no, my status bar, it's right? Like it's, it's like, what am I looking at, you know, and things like that, all right? So that's that's exactly what's going on there. So um, so those two work together, hand by hand. So w when you select a view, it will tell you, oh, what's happening on that view? What is it? And at the very bottom is, to me, one of the most important concepts to understand in Revit, phasing. Phasing is super, super, super important. And I'll tell you why in a second. All right, so phasing. We took a little pause for a second to breathe, but all good. It's because it's important. So phasing tells you what's happening in this time. And I get very geeky about it. It's really what happened yesterday, what's happening tomorrow, what will happen the day after tomorrow. So if you draw something in the wrong reality, for that matter, mm -hmm. it will cause trouble. It will cause a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So I wanna make sure that people draw things on the phase where they belong, meaning existing conditions. That's why as soon as I click on the existing, you're gonna say that says phase existing. Existing, existing. Demo will be, when does demo happen? Well, it doesn't happen on the existing it will happen in the future, but it's happening to the existing, which is the previous. Mm -hmm. So this is a real, you know, funny concept to grasp. But once people get it, it makes everything easy. It makes everything easy. So that 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 one, I, I've been teaching Revit for a very long time, and I, it takes weeks sometimes for people to get it. Very, very, very you know, But we've done it for you. It's already done, right? Mm -hmm. It's a kind of a blessing in, uh, in a curse at the same time because because then people don't understand it because they never have yeah. to make it. So, um, but but it, here it is. So you're gonna notice that the basement right now on those zero, zero, all the zeros are existing, all the ones are new, uh, demo, all the twos are proposed, right? Okay. How they begin. So, and, and, you, and you see the difference. So here we have existing, then we have new construction, show previous plus demo. Then we have new construction, show previous plus new. So the, the, the proposed is showing what's new, like I am adding a room to this, okay. but it's also showing the rest of the room, what's existing there, what has been there, okay. but it's taken away what's already been demoed. Does that make sense? What? So, okay. so and, I, and I will show you more, a little bit more about it, right? So it's going to make more sense. So. Um, but that's what it's doing. So if you if you just make sure that you you know go through these, okay, face filters, okay. So we got show complete, yeah, what's existing, great. Then on demo is new, but show previous whatever existed plus what I'm taking away, mm -hmm. and then in the new one, which is a proposed, you're gonna show what's new, but also what's from yesterday that wasn't removed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's very very important. Okay. That's very very. Okay, so and I typically have my properties bar and my browser away. <laughs> I use two screens, 
So I'll try to keep him here for the sake of helping, but I like him away. I like him to be away. So um, but so so that people can see it. So that's that. So you know what you've what your software has come with, what you have. Um, everybody at Flow has the same uh, template. Every project's created equal. So we we got the same things. So what do I want you to do now? Now you you've set up this. I want you to save it. You're like, well, I haven't done anything. Well, you have the template right now. You got to go to file and say save. And this is very, very important. How you name it is very, very important. How every file is named is very, very important. And I guess I'm getting old because I keep insisting that it's very, very important, mm -hmm. right? So, so here's what I do. So I go back to my other folder where I had already the name of everything. And again, I'm a shortcut kind of guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this name right here, which was done correctly already. Mm -hmm. And our Revit file literally will be named project number, project address, and what we're doing. And I like people to do dash existing. And I like people to do the date. 23, 2022. Right? So project name, which I've, uh, project number, which I've already told you begins with the year and then what project that is. We are in project 394 of 2022. Ooh, we're probably going to end with a thousand wow. projects, probably. Maybe not. Maybe we'll, we'll do 800, I think. So um, I digress. So 64 Tucker Street is the address. And then I like to know what I'm doing. So we're doing the basement. And what is this? This model is existing. I like to record each model for each phase in relationship to our four step process. And we save a copy of it so that if something moves, if something happens, you're like, oh, something isn't right. Well, let's go back to the existing and see whether something got moved by mistake or something where there was an error. So that's very important. And we save all of the phases on the archive. Okay. Another very important uh, uh, topic here is that. I actually just made a video on our YouTube channel. People can actually go watch it. I'm probably going to try to link it somewhere here. And it's how to get rid of a million backups. So sometimes Revit creates one backup after another backup. So we just go into options and make sure that this says one. So that it doesn't keep saving 001, 002, 000, 000, 000. I don't know if you've seen that, but it happens. All right. And we save. That's it. And it's, it's you notice that it wasn't save as. I just clicked on save. It already knows that it does not want to override the template. Then after this, you can just delete the template. You don't need it there anymore. You've already used it for what you need, which is to create a project. It's almost like a blank piece of paper. And after you've used it, you just move on, right? So now it's saving that. And that's really, really, really critical. Um, after that's saved, what do we do next? Well, we now prepare ourselves to actually do the massive, which is the why of everything. So the massing, as, as I said before, is really the boundaries that we're going to be using generally accurate for what we're going to be measuring. So that when we go on site, we get it close. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes we have to redraw everything because the buildings as shown in Google have changed, right? Like literally they're buildings that have changed drastically from what they looked like a year ago in Google. So, but hey, nonetheless, we, we got to Nevertheless, we, we have an option. You know, we, we have something to work with. All right. So what things do you have as a resource to create this mask? So we have Google Earth. Mm -hmm. We have Bing from Windows, mm -hmm. which is another option. Sometimes they do show different things. Mm -hmm. It's very important to be able to do both of that. Mm -hmm. We have the assessor's website from the city, whichever city they may have. We have... Um, Sometimes the assessor website has a property card that has a very <laughs> dummy little sketch of what the property may look like or have looked like. Okay. Um, why? Well, because each town and municipality likes to, well, it doesn't like, it's just part of the law. They tax people, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you tax something you don't know? So they do, do, they do have dummy drawings of what that property looks like so that they can tax it appropriately. They tax you by the amount of uh, square food, by the amount of bedrooms, by the amount of rooms. So they do have a little assessor's card that tells people what the property looks like. And they get it updated as we update all of our drawings and we submit for permits. 
we help them basically update all of their databases. So that's a resource we have. What other one do we have? We have the initial consultation video that I did because I am walking through that thing. And sometimes it's hard to actually understand it because you probably weren't there. I was there. So you're like, oh, I don't know. But it can actually corroborate or cross pollinate what you already have. It's different layers of the truth. Mm -hmm. So Google Earth gives you one layer. Um, the video gives you another layer, which is probably the most accurate out of all of the things you're gonna see. The property card gives you another layer. And you use all of those to generate your best estimated guess, educated guess of what this property will look like. So whoever's gonna measure it, goes to measure it. You may be the one measuring it. And I assume you are going to be the one measuring it. But I want to make sure that people, like, you know, we, we don't wanna be a factory line, like, you know, like, you, you do the, whoever does the yeah. math, should go measure it. But that's a skill that sometimes I need somebody to just do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to pay them to just do, listen, we got 10 projects we need masses for. Go ahead and do that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a really, really important skill. Like, mm -hmm. and it will get you to the next step, which is very accurate existing conditions. Mm -hmm. I want people to do accurate and very well done models of existing conditions. That's mm -hmm. a service. Mm -hmm. If they can do that, I am willing to hire somebody just to do existing conditions because they can do a very good job. That's good. Then they graduate from that and they can do uh, the define that you know the envision stage, which is mostly you know looking at pictures and ideas mm -hmm. and concepts, but also the design. Because if they are able to model a reality, they can likely create a new reality. Which you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you understand how things are built already, you're likely to say, Well, what if I do this mm -hmm. with a stand? You know, what if I do that? Right? So um, and they say everything has been done already. So if you can map reality very well, you could probably map multiple realities and create something new. Good. I got geeky there. Please comment on the comments below. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's that, right? So now we're going to do like, uh, how do I find all this stuff? Well, one by one. So I said that we have our video, which is, well, I'm going to delete the template, by the way, because we don't need the template anymore. Bye-bye. Um, and then we're gonna go back to our design, existing conditions, photos. And that's where I put my initial consultation. And I'm here talking to the owners about their property. There are things you can see even without opening the video. Mm -hmm. There is a chimney in the middle. There is some changes of levels. I think people can see like the floors and things like that. Like, you know, there are things you can see. You're like, okay, I'll, I'll dig more into it. Then we go to our, okay, right here. So now we're gonna go to Google Earth. What's the address? Um, the address is 64 Talker Street, Lean Mast. Great, let's take a look at that. Google Earth, great. What is this? All right, so we got this property, we got this property. Which one is it? So make sure you get the right one. Uh, that's two. That's one, 64, great, it's a match. 64, mm -hmm. they have a driveway here, okay. And okay, so the title of the, pro of, the, of the project folder itself says basement. So we're gonna be worrying a whole lot about the basement, not so much about the building above, but how did you get out of the basement? You need to go up. So there, that, it's important to understand how the floor above works so that you can be able to get out. That's just really, I call that common sense. And me and Marcos always say, well, you know, we want people to use a little bit more of their common sense. Like, how do you get out? So if you just model the basement, you're gonna have to sketch the floor above. Even if you don't do the entire unit above, you're gonna need to know how to get out and how to show that, right? Mm -hmm. how, how to show the context. Mm -hmm. So I like people to understand that mass, like that massive. And really just looking at these, you know, that there is a face that has a bump out, that has a little addition here that does this, that probably turns back, that then goes in, that has a bump out. Listen, that single line, that's helpful for me because I can then, I can use that when I go to measure, right? Mm -hmm. There's another bump out here. We don't know much about this, but hey, what about aerials? Do we have a way of looking at this from the sky? Satellite, that may be another layer of reality that it's important to look at okay here you go so we zoom right in and we're like oh look so this shows me a reality the ground shows me another reality but this is the roof um 
people need to understand and in design school that's what you're gonna learn like things aren't just simple extrusions or wake up. Mm -hmm. they can actually change and grow and change and grow you know like so but but this is a little bit of reality there's some bump outs there's some elements that you have to look at so you take a look at that so google earth is the first resource we have available to us right that's the first resource i want you to look well it's the second besides the initial consultation video then we go to the next one what's the next one the assessor's website right everybody pays taxes incredible that we were fighting so hard and we're talking about the tea party and throwing all the tea into the water and still taxes are a reality we all deal with forever. So whatever we run away from, we actually do. Um, uh, that's, yeah, that's not architecture. But um, so we go to the assessor website and you're like, how do I find that? Well, where is this located? It's in Massachusetts. We can say assessor's website. Simple, you know? Google it, right? <laughs> that's, that's the first thing. So a little hint, certain uh, certain areas of Massachusetts, certain places in Massachusetts have this thing called Patriots Properties, which I think is a third party company that the municipalities hired to do their assessor, the assessor's database for them. So whenever you see that, you're like, chin, 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 that's money. Because I can find information relatively quickly within that portal. So. I'm one of those guys that's always opening a new link tab. So I open that because I never know if the truth is going to be there. So I want to have a plan B. Plan B is, well, Lynn Assessor's office, uh, uh, office. That sounds right to me. Go there. And, you know, those two might do it. This looks like money to me. This is great. This looks great. This is what I want. All right. So this is for Lynn. We know we're in the right place. Make sure you know that you're in the right place because so many people have done Salem, New Hampshire. Salem, Oregon, right? And it gets really, really confusing. Like, you, yeah, I've ordered pizza in the wrong place. <laughs> you know, there is actually a place like that in Oregon. So make sure you get it right. And then here you're gonna say, well, what's the street? It's Talker. Okay, one number, it's 64 Talker. And you also corroborate. I like people to really corroborate. Don't accept anything as true. Right? So you're like, well, is this the talker that I'm talking about? Well, let's look at the proposal. And if the proposal said Alhenis Veles Liriano, then that's right. So let's go into the proposal and make sure we get it right. And again, the people that make it really far at flow design and in life are the ones that do this before I look at it. As individuals, if they do things like that and I go and talk to them, I will feel like, wow, they are a blessing to me. You know, Julio is like that, Yvonne has been like that. Many people have been like that. Like it's like a blessing because they're doing the let work. Mm -hmm. And the proposal is titled Mr. Hennis Velas Viviano. It looks right to me. So ching ching ching, it's a match. So we'll click it. Let's click. You can click anything. You can click. Let's click, let's click that. There, right. Oh, this looks beautiful to me. We see a little layout of a floor, a little picture of this, a little description of this, of this information, even private information, like, oh, so Hennis, Bellas, Liriano, and Maria. Oh, are they married? I don't know, you can gossip a little about it. <laughs> Whatever, who cares? Um, <laughs> but you found the information, you know who they are, you know when it was appraised, which was in 2021, last time they appraised it. Really cool stuff. And you asked me the question of, what do I know about zoning? Like, mm -hmm. well, here you have a little tab that says zoning. Mm -hmm. Now, full disclaimer, Patriots Properties does not exist for every particular town in Massachusetts or everywhere we work. We work in Florida, New Hampshire, Maine, we're licensed there, Connecticut, it's not the same. But there will be something like it everywhere, right? There, there will be something like it. Mm -hmm. um, so it might not be as easy as this. So I like people to literally print the record card. Like, go in and say control print and save that for me. That's valuable information. And uh, let me see how you move it. Oh, I have my picture right there, so I can't see it. Um, well, let's see if I can click enter. Okay. So save it and go into, oh, this is the wrong person's information. I'm sorry. So again, or good friend or path, right? Copy paste 
and it's not gonna be saved under the proposal. It's going to be saved under design, and um, I will put it under. Yeah, you know what? You can either put it under code analysis, which is gonna be part of that, or under existing conditions, and you can put it right right here, or under field verification. Uh, just be, you can just leave it right there too. Like it's part of the existing conditions. We're doing our history, you know. Okay, so I'm saving it right here. Okay, great. That looks good. I like to also sometimes zoom in and see how the quality of it, doing control and shift and rolling your little mouse allows you to zoom into things. That's really great. These are all the skills you pick up that make you so f efficient. And because you're going to be needing this baby right here. The tool that Julio Guterres loves the most here at the office, I think, is the snipping tool. You can easily just grab that snipping tool right here. Save it as on your desktop. I, I don't want it really on the desktop, but you can do it on the desktop for the time being. He always does it temporarily on the desktop and he stays forever <laughs> on the desktop. <laughs> He's laughing. Um, but that's good. You already have a nice little base and I'll, I'll tell you all about it. But this is golden. This is closer to the truth. We're going to get you're going to it's, it's amazing. But, um, well, the tab number two that we needed to open, we didn't really need it. I don't really need it. I don't think it's important anymore. You've got everything you need on this property card. You can be, you know, a little dig more into it and see what's, what's the zoning. It's a zoning code L1%, 100, I have no idea what this means. But, so, but this, this gives you most of the information you're going to need. Right? So that said, we've looked at Google Earth, we've looked at our initial consultation information, and we've looked at our property car. Are we ready to draft some massings? I think we are. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's gonna be the next video, and we're gonna pause this one. Please watch the next one on this series coming next.